Hey everybody, welcome to today's live grid webinar. I'm Bill Faith from Limo University and we are about five minutes past the hour. Sorry for the delay, but we have Pat Charlevale from Drive Profit with me, which is going to be hosting. Say hello, Pat. Hello, everybody. And we are going to have Amir Zafar, obviously the guest of honor that everybody wants to meet and see the technology behind grid today. How are you today, Amir? Greetings, everybody. Thank you. Awesome. So a couple of housekeeping items before we jump in for all of the attendees as we continue to fill up here. I really appreciate, first and foremost, for everybody attending today. Um, one thing that I'd like you to do, where your name is over on the right-hand side of your screen, you're going to see a little hand right there. That's what you can do to raise your hand. So if you can see my screen, please click on that little hand button for me so I know that everybody's able to see our screen. Good. Andy's, Andrew's good. Clayton's good. Dan's good. David's good. Dimitri, Faith, George, James, James, Jeffrey, Jelani. Awesome. So it looks like we're good on everybody seeing the screen. So if you'll click your hand again so it goes away. And I've got one more exercise for you. So obviously we really probably don't even need to go through this one, but you're obviously hearing me. Just click that hand one more time uh, if you can hear me okay. Awesome. Cool. So we're good on the housekeeping stuff. For those of you that are having some issues, it looks like 90, 95% of everybody has confirmed they can see our screen and they can actually hear us okay. So if you are having issues, number one, I would check your internet connection. And number two, if that doesn't fix anything, then I would log out and log back in. But I would do it really, really quickly because we're about 75% filled to capacity. Uh, right now. So once again, thank you everybody for joining us today. It is time for us to dive right in and introduce you uh, to GRID. This is an evolution, not a revolution. And kudos to Pat Charla for putting this deck together uh, today, Pat. Thank you so much. This is really about you guys. And that's what I really want to make uh, abundantly clear that the connectivity and what you're going to learn today from both Pat and from Amir from Grid has all been built over the last, I think, four and a half to five years for you, the operators. And I'm ready to dive right in and I'm going to turn it over and introduce you. If you don't know, Pat Charlevale from Drive Profit. Take it over, Pat. Hi, everybody. I met Amir about four years ago. Um, actually, we met on LinkedIn, so social media does work. Um, and I was trying to do something um, where I could pass reservations off to uh, my clients and others. And it was simply impossible because there was, there was really no way to do it. Uh, so Amir uh, reached out to me on LinkedIn, and he and I started to talk about what the possibilities were and what he had started to build for our industry. And sometimes it really takes outsiders to look at an industry's technology and see what is really possible. And Amir um, is not restrained by how things have always been done by operators and even the suppliers to operators. So his perspective is different. And grids engineers and the system architects and the developers have delivered a solution to ground transportation, that is licensed operators, um, whose need for advanced technologies has been all but ignored for the 15 or 20 years that I've been in the business. Um, Amir, um, who is where I'm introducing, um, was a founder of Access, Access Commerce, which is a, um, a big um, e-commerce company. And Amir, um, with Access behind him, was he established Grid in, in 2011 to leverage the solutions and the experience of Access specifically for us, the premium chauffeured industry. Um, at Access, Amir helped clients realize the full business value from their solutions, their e-commerce solutions, and uh, now powered by many of the um, Access Commerce resources, including 500 technology experts, 
uh, grid continues to ride on the cutting edge of the technology wave. Um, it's been, you know, four long years um, that I have, well, had the pleasure of working with the MIR, um, but it's been a, a tough row to hoe, as they say. Um, but as Amir and his team have, have come to know and understand the nuances of your operations, um, he's developed the technology required to run an essential part of your business more effectively. And what will end up being advances that I, I would say required tomorrow, but it, they're not. They're required today. You need to compete. You need to do it better and faster. And Amir has the solution. So, with all that having Pat, been said, can I interrupt yeah. you for one second, Pat? Sure. Before you interrupt, so everybody, Pat said something that's very important that I want to clarify. So everybody has some context uh, behind Pat and Drive Profits' relationship with Grid. Pat started the Conex project, and Pat stated that she's been working with Grid for four years. That is 100% uncompensated. Pat is doing this out of the goodness of her heart working with GRID because she knows the benefits that this is going to bring to you as the operators. That is the exact same reason that I'm here and I got involved with Amir uh, and Pat when I was out at two GCLA uh, presentations that I did in San Francisco and Los Angeles last month. So that's really why Pat and I are here. We have no vested monetary stake in this uh, with GRID at all. We believe in the platform. We've seen it with our own two eyes. Pat's seen it develop. Uh, you're going to see it live today. So Pat's going to introduce Amir, and we've got about three to five minutes of stuff to go through in a deck so you can really understand Grid for those of you that have never seen it or don't even know what it is. And then you're going to get to the star of the show, which is not Bill, not Pat, not even Amir. You're going to see this work live with a real reservation today um, out of a company in Los Angeles. Correct, Amir? Pat? Amir, is West on? Hello, sorry, I was muted to be make sure to make sure I'm not making any noise. Um, yes, they're they're all on, and we're going to be able to do that. Terrific. Awesome. So, so now without that any from Amir, and everybody knows his voice. Why don't you go ahead and introduce him? <laughs> that's uh, that's uh, fine. Without any further ado, um, I'd like to introduce you all to Amir, uh, the CEO and founder of Grid Technologies. Um, who is now I'm very happy to call my friend, and he is wicked bright, so I will leave this to him. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Actually, Pat, uh, Bill, um, uh, you, you've done a really great uh, you know, introduction. Um, I don't think I have much more to add. I just want to kind of fill in on, on where we come from. Uh, we come from a background of application integration, system integration, uh, which is, in, in layman's term, digital plumbing. Okay? Uh, we connect systems and system flows and their data flow to each other, so business can go on uh, with existing technologies, and that's what we've done for 20 years. When we came into your industry, we quickly realize that there is many, many infrastructures in place, many technologies and investments that have already happened. And what really needs to happen is really good old-fashioned integration in a collaborative form. And uh, that's what the GNET platform is about. It's about bringing functionality right from your own system mm -hmm. so you can distribute uh, you can uh, uh, send, receive, uh, v uh, view your driver, whether they're on your affiliates technology or they're on two affiliates remove technology, um, and be able to create that transparency without any question in your head on what's going on. Um, and then we will move on to the next thing we will show you, as which is uh, the uh, on-demand uh, uh, layer which we are introducing to the industry, uh, which everyone can take advantage of. Um, the slides here, I, I think, uh, uh, Pat, I think these are the, the snapshots of our dashboard, kind of a view, and you will see them live right now as, as the maps and everything else. If you want, uh, I can go right to the demo, guys. 
Should we do let's that? Let's go through the slide. Let's let's have Pat go through the slides first, Amir. Okay. Go ahead, Pat. Are right, you finished? Um, grid is um, is real. It works. Um, it is currently integrated completely with Fast Track. It is currently integrated with Livery Coach. It is halfway integrated with Limo Anywhere. Um, but the plumbing is there. The integrations are driven largely by the um, software providers. And while Grid has done 90% of the work, they still are helping. They're working toward getting everything integrated so that it becomes completely seamless. Um, what we are going to show you today um, is the foundation of an on-demand on solution. Today, you can go on what Amir calls the pinger system. I like to call it fleet tracker. Um, and see your cars or vehicles, your affiliates' vehicles, anybody who wants you to see their fleet can see the fleet. Um, and we'll show that to you live so that you'll see um, that there are actually, um, I'll turn on my app and you'll see me in Connecticut um, and Amir in Los Angeles. And uh, it's there and it's, it's working. Um, the, the advantages of the, the grid platform um, it's an open market platform, um, which, which means that you can send and receive reservations electronically at the push of a button. It's going to, I was trying to be nice and say reduce or eliminate, it's going to eliminate manual data entry errors. You're not going to have to cut and paste anymore. You're not going to have to hand bang information into the system. It just goes. Um, transactions become faster, you're able to handle more business, you're able to um, build your own networks if you're a network provider, um, more, um, you'll have more access if you're um, in, inbound from a network, and the bottom line is you're going to increase the productivity and you're not going to have to add staff. Um, so Pat, can I ask a quick question? Sure. Sure. So that first sentence says you can send or receive electronic reservations and other information via your back office system to any other GNET network participant. So Correct. I just want to make sure that everybody understands. If you're on Livery Coach today, which is integrated, and you have an affiliate that's on Fast Track to get today that's integrated, then yep. it's one click. Correct. Correct. There is no email. There is no you know, accept, receive. If you have your vehicles available and it's available, this is how you're going to build your inventory. And it does not just have to be applicable for on-demand, correct, Pat? This also works for pre-existing reservations, uh, the way that correct. we currently handle affiliate business. Correct. Correct. It is right now, um, if you're on Livery Coach um, and Livery Coach has brought you up on their system, and same with Fast Track you can send and receive rides today. Awesome. That's great stuff. Let's keep going. I love cool. it. Um, what, what the, the biggest plus of the system is the visibility. Um, you can see your vehicles, your local affiliates vehicles. You can see vehicles in London, in Tokyo. Um, anyone that you want to see your fleet can see it. It's up to you. It's No one is saying you have to show your fleet, part of your fleet. Um, it's, it's your decision. But if you have capacity, then get on the map and, um, and start to um, take business and grow your business. And, start to utilize vehicles um, in a, a far better way, an easier way than you have ever been able to before. Because you can see what's available and, and not deadhead from an airport, you know, give it to somebody else or vice versa. 
And Pat, the operator has 100% control of how they would configure uh, that availability, correct? Absolutely, absolutely. It's the, it's the operator's fleet, it's the operator's brand, and it's what you want to do with the system, and that's all that, that's all that matters. So I see on the up, screenshot up here, the it, says, it looks like it says My Cloud Limo. Do I have to, if I'm an operator and I own Bill's Limo, which I don't, but hypothetically, does that mean I have to use a grid app, or what is my, my cloud limo? Uh, my cloud limo is the identification on the um, screen, um, on the map, where all the pingers are pinging. So today, for example, even though it's not integrated with all of the systems, you can click on the pinger um, that is if you have the app and see the vehicle and so what Amir has done is because there's no connectivity yet you can click on that dot you see the light green dot and find out who the operator is uh, what system they're on who the contact is the telephone number the type of vehicle it is and you can pick up the phone and call that dispatch office and say give me that car as long as you have an agreement with that person Right. So, I mean, really what, what, what we're saying here, Pat, and what I'm hearing, and, and just to make clear to everybody out there, the, the days of being limo anywhere to limo anywhere or livery coach to livery coach uh, to where it's really just within your own platform of sending and receiving reservations, that's gone. I mean, now we can send between limo anywhere to fast track to livery coach, um, you know, or to any of the other softwares that provide that integration, plus... If they're just registered for the GNET network, they can literally go and click on the map when they see an available vehicle and place a phone call if needed if that person doesn't have software or is just using the driver app, correct? Correct. Correct. Absolutely. That's something new that I've learned today. I think that's uh, unbelievable. So hopefully everybody's seeing right now, before we even really dive into the tech and hand it over to Amir, the advantages of what you're going to have. You're talking on-demand, near-demand, pre-existing, and even identifying vehicles that are not in your current network. And Pat, how many, how many current operators are there uh, that are registered on the grid network and that have actually been through the testing phase? Because I think that's something that's really critical. We're not talking about, hey, we're just announcing this to the industry. There's only three people using this. There's more than 200 right now, I believe, and it's been tested through alpha, through beta, for like a year, correct? This isn't something that's just launching today. Correct, and, and what, um, what Amir will show you is the, um, the dashboard that GRID has built um, that allows, um, allows you to book and uh, send reservations in a two-step process. So if, the, if you haven't yet integrated with livery coach, but you're a livery coach operator, you can send through the dashboard to fast track um, and soon to be um, limo anywhere. So the the grid plumbing, the network is a hundred percent operational. Where we are um, not a hundred percent is in the integrations with individual um, software providers. Um, they ha they've, they've had a lot of work to do in uh, bringing their systems to um, so that, that we could talk to them, basically. Right. So I think for those of you that are posting questions already, we're going to get to those uh, here in just a few minutes. We're going to hold as much time for as many questions as you have on the back end. Also, just go ahead and if you have a question as we go through slide by slide or even when Amir starts presenting, um, if it's something that's uberly important, no pun intended, that is tied to Amir's presentation, we'll stop and we'll ask him that question. And I've just got kind of a statement from Randy um, that said, uh, Pat, we should point out that it covers the entire farm in, farm out process, including things Affiliate Connect does not do. Driver info, status updates, vehicle tracking, final charges, and maybe even slip something in about the, the payment structure as well, because Randy's 100% correct. Can you elaborate on that a little bit before we move into cross-system mobile app capability? Yes, absolutely. This, um, unlike anything else in the industry, 
this gives you all the information, complete transparency. Um, it gives you everything. It's, it's like you're using your own system. And the payment and uh, you know for payment processing. Yes, and then payment processing is is the second uh, the second piece, and you can speak to that, Amir, better than I can, on um, solving one of the operators' big pain points, which is how um, you pay for and get paid for the transportation you do for your affiliates. Right, and that's a layer we're going to be putting in next right. within the grid infrastructure. Right. So we believe that that should be automated, and that's once we are up and running with all of the system integration, something that is on the agenda to you know Correct. soon to be delivered. So I do have one more really good question that just came in. I'm just typing them an answer since we're on the okay. mobile app capability page, um, and this come this comes from Angelo. Uh, can you use driver anywhere, um, or excuse me, what the question is, do users need a grid driver app, or can they just use driver anywhere within Limo Anywhere? You can use whatever you want. This, goal. Whole, thing, this whole thing started because we did not want you, the operators, to have to change the way you do business or the systems you've been using for years and years and years and have spent bundles of money on. So your mobile app, if you're on Limo Anywhere, can talk to Fast Track. You can give a job to a Fast Track provider and on the passenger app side, the passenger will see that car, whether it's yours or your affiliate. So you keep your driver app, you keep your passenger app, you keep your dispatch system. Um, it all works through the GNET platform and gives you transparency that you've never had before. Awesome. Great answers. Cool. Um, Real-time vehicle location. Um, Again, the, you with the operator controls what, who and what other operators see. It's your fleet. If you want to put five cars on GNET, on the platform as available, you put five cars. You want to put your whole fleet, you put your whole fleet. Um, Amir has been um, fooling around with um, the colors of these dots. Um, we had a long conversation about, um, you know, someone's going to the airport, can't we make them another color because they're going to deadhead back? And if you knew that, then why would you send your car out when you've got a deadhead coming back? Um, it just opens up worlds of possibilities for you. And the systems update in real time. So if you have given a job to Fast Track and or any of them, if you've given the job, you will see that the driver is en route. You will see that the driver is on location, and you will also see when the passenger has been dropped. So the system updates in real time. And so does the positioning, the GPS longitude and latitude, so you can certainly watch your cars. So, and Pat, I think that's something, too, that is, uh, you know, worthwhile to really take a second and, you know, Give a big shout out to Eddie at Fast Track, Chip and David wow. at Livery yeah. Coach uh, yeah. for being the earliest adopters. Mark Gentry, yeah. you know, for jumping on uh, at Limo Anywhere, and yeah. you know, I think we've got a, another big announcement later in this deck, uh, and you. you know, which we can thank them now is Mark Ustick and the entire Hudson team uh, for committing today to literally get the connectivity done for their customers um, as well. Yeah, without. Without Eddie and Chip and David um, specifically, this um, you, you would not see what we've got today today because they have bent over backwards um, to get this um, implemented into their systems. Um, Fast Track is a very very deep integration at this point. You can go on demand with Fast Track as we speak. 
there's auto dispatching, it's all done. Um, and we, we will get Livery Coach and we will get Limo Anywhere and Hudson all on the same page. And I, and I think what's really important, Pat, for everybody that's asking about, you know, do I have to get a different app? Do I have to have a different driver app? The answer is no. Um, do I have to change softwares? The answer is no. no. Um, Amir said it very eloquently to me the, the first time that I saw this, which I believe was on Memorial Day um, of all days. And thank you, Pat and Amir, for showing it to me on Memorial Day. And I think we spent two or three hours together. We did. <laughs> if, you did, if you didn't read the landing page content when you signed up for this that I put together, grid is the plumbing between and behind your softwares. You will really never see grid working. It's just there. It just works. It's like AT&T's you know, fiber optic phone lines. We never really see it when we're using a VOIP or you know, a different phone system. But at and is the one that actually has all of that fiber behind it. So grid's going to be the plumbing underneath the sink that is really taking the water and the garbage through the garbage disposal and flushing it out to sea. And up above, those beautiful looking cups that will be sitting on the counter in your sink is going to be livery coach and limo anywhere and fast track and the Hudson group and whatever other softwares decide to integrate. Here's my opinion on this, guys. I believe if your software platform doesn't integrate with grid in the next three to six months, you're probably going to want to make a software change. And there are two that are currently fully integrated right now with Livery Coach and Fast Track. And I believe Eddie was the first, as Pat said, is the deepest dive, because I don't believe that you're going to be able to live in this industry for six to 12 months without this technology. And I was going to save this for when Amir was doing his live presentation, but um, I mentioned this on a Facebook Live while I was on vacation in Colorado a couple of weeks ago. There was an operator in Houston who had a... Uh, a client land at LaGuardia at 5.30 at night on, I believe it was a Wednesday. And the client called him in Houston and said, I forgot to book my car. I need a car ASAP. Well, for those of you that know the New York market, that's virtually impossible at LaGuardia with the way that we connect with our affiliates today. I'm not going to turn this into a long story, but this operator had eight affiliates in that market. It's not like he had one or he had two. He had eight, and he even posted to the Facebook group, and he could not get the trip covered, and the client ended up using Uber about 30 minutes ago, or 30 minutes after he placed that initial phone call. Well, if he would have been on Gnet, he literally could have went to this map that you see right here, and he could have clicked on an available vehicle, and he may not have had an agreement in the contract or anything with that client, or he might have saw some of his affiliates, uh, that are available with the vehicles within five minutes or sitting in a holding lot at LGA, and he could have saved his relationship with his customer with one click. That's the power of grid, my friends, and that's what Amir calls a direct reservation. That is not even utilizing auto dispatch. Um, and that, as I've been talking about for quite some time, and I think it was very, very prevalent with the announcement that David and Scott made prior to GBTA and that GBTA, that this is what our industry is moving towards. And Grid is going to allow you, without making significant investments and making software changes, to be able to have this capability. Nobody on this call is telling you that you have to change your business model to on-demand. You can, and you're going to have that capability, but you're also going to have the capability to be able to increase utilization on those deadheads. And you're going to have the capability to be able to take more reservations from everybody that's on the network. And you're going to be able to see availability and build your network just by using this simple map right here. Did I say everything correctly, Pat? I don't know. Oh, I don't you want did. him to speak, that's for sure. Yeah. Right on. You did. You did. Awesome. So let's go to the next slide. And, and you'll see this better when Amir does the demo. Uh, live. If you look at the, uh, this is a livery coach dashboard, if you look you see arrows going up and arrows going down, that's rides crossing systems. So you know one is from Cloud Limousine which is a made up name that goes into um, you know Lone Ranger who's a, an IO that you have in your network um, and back and forth. Um, and, you know, Amir will show you that we don't farm out farm outs, but you can go two to three layers deep if you want. 
um, and um, it again it updates real time um, as the ride proceeds and it's it's synced on both sides so if you're fast track and you've given the ride to livery coach or limo anywhere as that ride changes status it comes right back into your system so you know exactly what's happening to your passenger or with your passenger passengers having a wonderful ride the uh, the biggest advantage of the grid platform is that it is the foundation for the future um, it is the plumbing that lets um, each of the dispatch systems um, work together seamlessly um, without having to write to each other's APIs or whatever it is they do. Um, this makes it easy for everybody to get on board and for everybody to take advantage of um, the technology. Um, independent operators can be on it, small guys, big guys. And integration is beginning now with the Hudson Group. We're very excited um, to have them join the grid GNET platform. And we think they'll be a great, great addition and cover all that. So we've plans. got quite a few, actually two or three people that have asked if grid integrates with DEEM currently. And I'll answer that one for you, Pat. The answer yeah. is grid integrates with any software that's out there. Um, and Grid actually does uh, uh, approximately 90% of the writing to the API, and then the software companies come back in and do roughly about 10%. Don't hold me to those numbers because I'm not a, a development guy by any means, but I think that's pretty close. So if your software company, if you didn't just see them, which is Livery Coach, Fast Track, Limo Anywhere in Hudson, your software company right now does not integrate uh, with the Grid network. So as from my position, I would strongly recommend that if you're on a software like Deem or Trip Tracker or Ground Widgets or LMS or whatever it is that's out there, LimoWiz, the only way that you're going to convince them to integrate is to tell them that you need it. Because the one thing that I really love about Grid, outside of the deliveries that it provides for you guys, the services that it provides, the efficiency that it creates, the communication that it provides, is that you, do, you should not have to change softwares. And I think the companies that are on grid are going to have a distinct competitive advantage for those that decide not to integrate. We all know how difficult it is to make a software change. I made three changes and when I was in the industry in less than five and a half years, and they were painful, and they cost me a lot of money, not only in switching softwares, but in lost clients and lost data because it's never seamless. And that's something that I love about grid. You use your current app with Fast Track or Livery Coach or Limo Anywhere or the Hudson Group. You use your current software. Once again, it's just the plumbing uh, behind it. Grid is never going to be a reservation system or a dispatch system or anything else. They're just going to connect the softwares and provide the technology that we've all been waiting for for the last four or five years. Pat? I think... Um, I think now is a, a, a good time for Amir to jump on um, and demo the system um, live. Um, awesome. I think that's what and, everybody's been waiting for, right? They're sick yep, of listening to me yep. and you talk to them. <laughs> I know, really. Um, and Wes, um, Travis from Exclusive Sedan should be on. Um, he's going to demo the um, livery coach side um, and um, it's up and running he's got the, the the whole thing he's been beta testing it for us for um, a couple of months now and uh, it's all set and ready to go awesome so, Amir you ready? Yours. yeah sure How do I take presentation? I'm trying to find you in here. Oh, I see. Ah, who am I? I see what the issue is. Bear with me for one second. Hopefully I give it to the right one. Yep. No. Yeah, not my screen. 
Oh, that's it. That's it. There you go. There we go. And awesome. You all see my screen, right? Yep. All right. So I'm going to be quick because there's a lot of little things to show, and then we're going to get to Q&A. So um, showing you right now a fast track uh, customer who, who one of the providers, obviously yourselves, who is sitting on the portal and has got a lot of up arrows and down arrows. Up arrow means you farmed it out. Down arrow means it got farmed in. Uh, the statuses change uh, uh, real time, so where you see in route, when it becomes on location, as soon as it becomes on location, your status also changes on location and everywhere else. I'll show you that. Um, here's a passenger app that could be your passenger app. This could be any passenger app. This is not to demo this particular passenger app. This is to demo the capabilities of a passenger app. Passenger made a booking, as you see on the top, uh, reservation 52757. This reservation basically when it's when it's doing it's, um, into a fast track reservation system. Um, and I'll show you exactly 52757, what it looks like. This is 52757 at this row that I'm on. And reservation drops into, obviously, into your own reservation system. And then, for in the interest of time, we did it already. We farmed it out to Limo Anywhere, um, to the sandbox at Limo Anywhere. I'm going to now to Limo Anywhere side. Let me just make sure. Uh, this was reservation 52757. And it would be number 10074, George Marchetti. If we go back, that's George Marchetti over here on his uh, mobile phone. On Fast Track, it will show George Marchetti as a passenger. On Lemo Anywhere, we come here, is George Marchetti. We go into the reservation. The status was en route. We're going to now change the reservation status to arrived on Lemo Anywhere. Sorry, I'm not very familiar with this reservation system, so I may make mistakes. Uh, now we have the reservation in the status mode called Arrived. So we will go to our dashboard, and we have a little failed message here. Actually, this is coming from Exclusive. This is our reservation. Our Lemo Anywhere just went on location. If we go right now into Fast Track Cloud, which said in route before, as you see down here, if we refresh the screen, or if it, we put it on auto refresh, it will say on location. This is to show a, a reservation that we sent to Lemo Anywhere got updated by the Lemo Anywhere site, and the status came back right away on your Fast Track system. And most probably, if we go to our passenger mobile app and refresh, we now see on location. Uh, we don't have the Limo Anywhere driver app in our position, or else I would say, let's do a locate car and locate the car. But we don't have that right now in our hands for the purpose of demo, but we're going to show you another one. So, so that basically is a full circle, not a full circle, but a semicircle of going from a passenger app on your side into your reservation system, got farmed out to your affiliate in another city, most probably. Your affiliate dispatches it to the driver. Driver goes to pick up your passenger. Your passenger gets the same bleeps and uh, messages and where's my car and who's my driver features as you got it from your own system back in your city. That's the goal. The goal is to never leave your comfort zone of what technology you're using already. So this was an example of sending a reservation there. Now we did another reservation over here, 52733. Um, this is um, actually, that's also the limo anywhere, so we're going to do this one, 52766. 52766, we go into Fast Track. 
and on fast track, we have 52766. We're going to farm this guy out to driver scheduled. We're going to farm this out to livery coach, uh, uh, livery coach sandbox for now. And then we're going to have Wes send one from exclusive sedan over to us on this side. So we're going to look for livery coach sandbox. And it's as easy as that. You basically say dispatch to this affiliate. And your trip is now uh, communicated via GNET to livery coach. Any status quo changes will come to your side. Any changes to the reservation you make on your side obviously will go to the other side. So now let's go to the dashboard of our livery coach users. And this is still coming from, oh, actually, I'm logged in as a different person. I'm very sorry. I have to log out. Oh, we have the LC user here. OK, so we log in as livery coach sandbox. And we have something that just arrived from Cloud Limousine. Um, it's reservation number 52766 on fast track side. It's reservation number 16016 on the um, livery coach side. Now we're going to take this example to the next extreme. We know you guys don't do this, okay, but we're going to do this. We're going to farm out a farm out, okay? So this job came in from a fast track, and we're going to farm it out to a farm out. Amir, you're breaking the unwritten rules of not doing a double farm. Sorry, <laughs> what? what did I, I said do? you're breaking the unwritten rule of double farming an affiliate trip. Oh my god, yes, I know. That's why I brought it as an example. <laughs> so, we have reservation 16016. We're going to send this reservation over. We're going to do it from the portal so it's faster to Lone Ranger, which is an independent operator, not inside of Livery Coach, not inside of Fast Track. At this case, it's, it's a driver app that sits on another technology. This could be any technology. This could be any of the leading technologies out there that are pinging their app for you. This, this could be any driver, let's say, okay? In this particular case, it's an independent driver who's binking and saying, I'm available. So we farm this out to them. And if we look over here, we see this reservation fell in from Cloud Limousine to us, and we gave it to Lone Ranger. Okay, And here's Lone Ranger's driver app that says, I have a new trip. Lone Ranger comes in, looks at the trip, quickly starts the trip. He's excited. Okay, We're going to go back to livery coach first. On livery coach, on the, on the uh, portal, it says en route. Uh, if we had access right now to a livery coach system, I, and I could have it installed on my side without causing too much trouble to the livery coach team, I would have. But I think it's complicated doing a demo from my side. But you look at the livery coach reservation system. <clears throat> this reservation is in there right now. And the status code has changed to en route. This reservation came from fast track, right? So we go back in fast track, and we look. Last time it says driver scheduled at the bottom. Now we look at it, it says in route. So now even Fast Track knows it's in route. This reservation actually came into Fast Track from their passenger app, right? So we're going to go look in the passenger app, which is here. And our passenger app sees an en route for the trip they did. They click on the en route and they see vehicle location. They click on vehicle location. Obviously, I'm the one who's driving, so I'm, the car is right next to me. But you will see an icon for the car, and you'll see an icon for the passenger, and everything is within 30 seconds intervals. This car icon is coming from two systems removed, and it's still telling you where it is. So your passenger app is going to look golden in Tokyo, for example, right? You also get to know who your driver is, <laughs> it's a Lone Ranger, with a phone number. This picture, phone number, and all the information of the driver came three systems away. Updated livery coach, also updated fast track, also updating the passenger app. So Amir, can I jump in for one second? 
Correct. So company A who was on fast track, their client made a reservation via their passenger app. That yes. reservation from company A on fast track was farmed out to livery coach, which was then sent to their independent operator uh, driver on a driver app. And all of that information is coming back in real time from driver app that's the chauffeur to livery coach back to fast track and back into that passenger's app for company A in real time. Is that correct? Correct. That's unbelievable, my friends. And, and your affiliate manager sitting on, for example, livery coach saying, hey, I just farmed this farm end to my uh, uh, independent operator. I want to make sure everything is okay. Where is he? Guess what? The dot shows right on your map. This dot is coming from another system. Livery coach sees Lone Ranger's dot here, right? Now let's go to fast track because your fast track provider also is worried about this whole thing happening. He's saying, wait, I, I just sent my customer over to LA and, and he's being picked up by somebody. I want to know if the dot is there. There you go. Your passenger is in this dot. So on fast track, you see the dot that was farm out of a farm out to livery coach. And the idea is to create this transparency for your industry so you can actually pay attention to the operational aspects of your business, not technology. Technology is nothing but a tool. It doesn't make, make you successful. It's the operations and everything else you do, right? So this is just the technology part that will say, let's solve the pain of, of, of visibility. Let's solve the pain of, of transparency. And this is the easy way to do it. That's what we did. Okay, so I hope this makes sense. Bill, does this make sense kind of to the group? Yeah, I, mean, I think you did a really good job explaining that. And I do want to jump in with one comment, another great one from Randy. I think Randy should be running this presentation as opposed to me. Um, he said, we need to explain what the sandboxes are. The sandboxes, everybody, are just test sites, um, you know, that have been have gone through the testing period that uh, Amir is using to be able to show you how this works and what this information. But, Amir, you're really uh, going to – I mean, we, we can't really show – one of your, your guys' real dispatch screen in real time. Oh, oh I see. Your client data and your client information. Good question. We asked every company to give us, you know, how you buy one of these softwares. If every one of you who's got Lemo Anywhere or you've got Fast Track or Livery Coach, you, you've bought the license to use the software and you know it doesn't, it's not cheap, you know, to get in there. So we actually have asked every one of the companies to give us one account so we could use it. So we actually have a, uh, an account for livery coach, we have an account for fast track, we have an account for uh, limo anywhere, um, and, and we've used them as virtual or fictitious limo companies because you would be one of them, right? You would be one of those installations. So we use them as our fictitious sandbox to make sure all the data goes in clean, and then when everything is up and running and, and we know that that data is going in clean, then you will be the one who uses it and make sure the data is good. So the sandbox is to make sure we don't corrupt your data. If we send reservations right now to exclusive sedan, Wes is going to be all over the dispatch office telling them to cancel, cancel. It's not real. Um, so we don't want to use the demo for them on the production line. Right. So th these are actually live. They're happening in real time, but they're happening in a controlled environment that's not really their, their operating software, so we don't cause any issues. Yeah, we're not causing any issues. We're basically using the benign ones. Uh, no real, I think maybe Wes is going to send us something soon, but that's, that's in their control. Um, so you get to see uh, farm in, farm out, dots, availabilities, and of that sort. And hopefully this will explain the first part of what we did, which is getting your pre-reserved distribution in order and, and make it seamless, almost like it's in your own system. Okay? And then I want to show the pinger when we're ready. Are you ready? We're ready. Let's go. Okay. So um, let's, uh, let's do this. Um, I'm going to go to this driver and actually end the trip. And while you're doing that, Amir, I've got a, a couple of questions that I want to answer that have come in. Um, let's see. I think the first one is from Andy. You mentioned David and Scott earlier and their GBTA announcement. Is this what they were talking about? No, this is not what they were talking about, um, Andy, um, which kind of goes back to Faith's question. If one participates with grid, will you be able to have multiple grid type 
uh, platforms operating simultaneously, meaning uh, can we have Grid and Empire CLS system uh, going at the same time? Yeah, there's no, Faith, you can, you can use Grid and anything else that you want. There is no stipulation from Grid that you only have to use their system. So that's why the, right. Amir's built it to where it integrates with any software uh, that wants to integrate with the API so everybody in the industry can benefit. Um, last question I have for you is from Jason Kaplan. Uh, one of our NLA board members. Hey, Jason, um, have there been any discussions with Santa Cruz? Uh, yes, and we're hoping that they will get on soon. I mean, I think there's really been discussions with almost every, pretty much every software platform at this time, right, Amir? It's really just, it's open to any software platform. It's just a matter of do they want to, you know, come and integrate with Grid. And for all you operators that are out there, I think for those that aren't integrated, if they see what's going on today and they see the number of operators that are on grid and integrated and that you have livery coach, you have fast track, you have the largest per market share with, you know, Mark and Limo Anywhere at 4,300 plus customers and then you have the Hudson Group coming on, I don't think it would be very smart business practices probably not to integrate with grid because once again, I think those, those four software platforms are going to end up having an extreme uh, competitive advantage by being integrated with this technology. Right, and, and Grid really is good for all the soft, dispatch software companies. It just enhances their, their uh, features. It really doesn't take anything away. So I'm pretty sure all the companies that are hesitant about joining right now, they will soon see how it's working for everyone and they will jump on board because it really it's a win-win situation for everybody. So, go ahead Amir. So should, we show, should I show you now what we have? Yeah. Go for it. I love this. So, so we have now, it's a one-man company, you see, <laughs> one car out there. But uh, here's an example. Um, uh, here's where you can give visibility, and we're working with all the software dispatch companies to do this, okay? You have to give control to the dispatch office. The way your business runs is very customized. Not every car that's free right now means that it can carry the next trip or customer because you have so many plans for them and so many schedules. So throughout the day, if you have 25 cars that are on the, on the, on the road, you probably have all 25 busy or maybe 20 of them pretty busy for the whole day. Let's say there is five of them that you don't have much for them to do until 2 p.m., okay? Or you have a few cars that are coming back on a long deadhead or they're going to the airport and they're going to come back empty. So you basically what you do, you're on the dispatch map and you say, you know what, I actually want this particular car to get exposed to all my partners on GNET. I want everyone to see him. He's on a deadhead for the next 60 miles and is hoping somebody will pick him up. So you basically click the on-demand. The on-demand really isn't what everyone makes it to be in these days. On-demand is everything. Okay, on-demand is new demand. On-demand is a little bit later demand. On-demand is everything. Um, what we have built here is a, the concept of direct dispatch, not auto-dispatch, direct dispatch. What does that really mean? Um, you select in your office, this particular car is now on, vis uh, is visible, okay, to GNET. Also, it's visible to my own auto dispatch engine. That means it works for my few cars that are on demand in case my mobile lab customer says, I need a car now, right? But it works beyond that. What we're showing here is way beyond that. What's here is you just expose this guy to the whole industry that you work with, okay? You choose who sees it, right? You say, I don't want anyone to see it, or I want George to see it, or I want George and John to see it. I want all my affiliates to see it. You pick, right? That's part of the GNET setting up. But in here, you basically say, this guy's on demand. I don't want to have to worry about him until 2 p.m. What's going to happen on the map now? We got livery coach going on the map, okay? And they basically say, hey, I wonder if there's anyone in LA because we've got to go to Burbank Airport and pick somebody up and I don't have any cars. So they click on available fleet and they see supposedly all the green dots that are on deadheads, or on their way back from airports or whatever the dispatch office decides that they should be visible for. And you will see that this dot is related to you because this is probably from your partner and that's why you see them. You don't see every car in the world, you see your partner's cars. 
you click on the car and you will see their logo, My Cloud Limo. Uh, this is their grid ID, unfortunately, sorry, to, uh, we don't want to really, this is not the brand of the software they use. This is the grid ID of this, this, this particular fictitious limo company. This is the name of the contact within the dispatch office. This is not the name of the driver, it's actually dispatch office. This is their phone number. This is the ID of your driver as they're blasting and, and pinging away saying I'm here. That's the ID of the driver. So basically when you do, if you manually you're calling a dispatch office saying, uh, my partner, my buddy, I need Zaza at grdd.net, whoever that person is, he's near Burbank Airport. Can I send a reservation to you? You give it to him and that's how you can do it today, right, right away. This is how you can apply this right now. And in a few months, in less than a few months, what's really going to happen is you're going to be able to click on this dot and a text box really will appear here with a button that says send reservation number whatever to him, to, to this guy. So basically what you will do is you punch in your reservation number, you say send, and this car that belongs to your partner will get the reservation in their driver app, in their native driver app, whether they're using driver anywhere or livery coach driver app or Tosh Direct driver app, they will get it in their car and the reservation system will get an entry for that reservation with the driver assigned already. That means your dispatch office doesn't have to do anything. Okay, this is called direct dispatch. That means they told us, uh, let this guy be visible. If one of my partners wants him, they can have him. Partner said, I want him. They clicked the button, reservation dropped into the car. And no dispatcher got involved. Okay, now this car will be traveling and will be doing your trip until they're done. When they're done, it's done. And the next phase to this is these dots. <clears throat> Again, these dots today are available to human eyes. Next, they will be available via click. Click over here with, with like a reservation number, send. Next, they will be visible to the auto dispatch engines that are going to be running all over the world. And these auto dispatch engines are tapping into GNAT and saying, I want to see the nearest dot closer to Los Angeles. It gives them the number of dots. The auto dispatch decides which dot gets the dot, which dot gets the trip, and sends the trip GNAT delivers. So Amir, just to clarify, direct dispatch is basically being controlled directly by the person that clicks on the dot slash vehicle and sends the trip immediately, correct? Today, yes. Tomorrow it will be the auto dispatch engines that are on it for you. And then the operator will have the, the control to be able to set that up how they want, like based on proximity, or how does that work? It would, it would basically be the control or the decision of the person requesting or the ride or, or sending the ride. So if it's a human being, they will have to make a good judgment. If it's an auto dispatch engine, it probably had a reason for picking that dot, right? So you so. But the the operator is the one that defines the rules for picking the dot. Right. Yes, exactly. you're the one. So the operator is hundred percent control. Yes. Right. So yeah. if you know, for example, the operator says, "Pick my fleet vehicle first. Pick." Um, Affiliate one, second, year, affiliate, affiliate third, second. affiliate three, fourth. Right. Right. Correct. That's that's what it does, and and we don't or control that. Closest one. We right. don't control so, it. Right. So that's that's my point for everybody on the call. You as the operator get to use the logic when you set it up exactly how you want these trips to be distributed to your dots, which are your drivers. Right. At the moment, at the moment, these are dots that were basically never there and nobody could make themselves visible to each other. And we've heard many stories like what you said, Bill, of uh, trying to find an affiliate who can fill in for you for this urgent ride and just picking up the phone and looking for them is such a big effort that you lose the client meanwhile, right? So these dots immediately will give you access to your partner's available vehicles and, and you can call them right away and resolve it within five minutes rather than 30 phone calls and 40 minutes. Um, that, right away, this is for that, right? Um, you can pick an answer and say, look, I know he's on Pinger, but he's going the opposite direction. Why don't I give you another car? I mean, you can have those discussions because it's over the phone in, in between two humans today. When it gets to auto-dispatch, 
it really is the property of the auto dispatch engine that says I particular dot. Um, logically speaking, you don't take a dot that is 15 miles away and say, but come over here to do an on-demand ride for me. Usually that, that doesn't happen, you know, but if it does, that should be addressed. Right, and I think just to, to clarify that auto dispatch does not happen by GNET. Auto dispatch will happen by the operator software, correct? Yes, yes. Yeah, you may you may have a feature soon on Limo Anywhere that says do all my auto dispatches for my fleet and I don't want to even sit in the office, right? So here is uh, the system doing auto dispatches. Suddenly a trip comes through GNET, which was an urgent trip like due two hours or an hour from now. That also gets auto dispatched. And that might get auto dispatched to one of your own dots or it might actually might get auto dispatched to an affiliate dot because they're all busy. So the, the logic of auto-dispatch and who it gets dispatched to is very personalized to how companies want it and how you want to use it and how you want to distribute. GNET should not be involved in controlling auto-dispatches. We can all, we, what we should do is only serve the dots to partners who want to see each other and let them decide how they want to use it. You're going to display the, the inventory and the operator is going to pick and choose who they want, what dots they want to use. Yes. Perfect. It's all business relations and between the two companies. We don't get involved with that, as promised. Good stuff. Okay. So this was what we wanted to show because this is the next thing. This is right now available in Fast Track. As a matter of fact, just like you saw, you can go into the Fast Track uh, driver app. Sorry, that's not the thing. You can be in a fast track driver app, which is this, and you go on duty, and your dispatcher sees you, clicks on you, and says, put him on demand or make him regular. Make him regular will make him disappear off the map. And if you go right now into, into the GNET map, and just for the interest of time, I just refresh the page, you will see that dot is gone because the, the dispatcher took him off. He says, I need him right now. Uh, he's no longer on demand. So you control every car as you wish. It's not something that you lose control and you have to become suddenly the fleet of this technology that doesn't let you control your drivers. Uh, because, of the biz because of the way you guys do business, we thought about these things, that, that the control needs to be in the dispatch hands. So here's a, probably the best question that's a little bit controversial uh, that I've heard, but I think this is very important for the operators that are out there. Um, so much talk about Uber drivers being strangers, undocumented, invisible, and yet this program will attract the same drivers to sign up um, with any longer no complaints than he has in the system. Don't you think that our data and customers will be exposed uh, to the same issues as the TNCs um, and the alike? So I think what he's really asking is, uh, will this attract all of the, the Uber drivers to try to jump on this platform, and will they have access uh, to the limousine company's data? And I'm going to let you answer that, Amir, but before you do, um, Alvez had asked this. I think it's a great question. And number one, remember, you control everything, Alvez. You are the one that's selecting those dots. You're the one that's selecting the driver. You're the one that's building your affiliate network. So in the use case that, that I used a few minutes ago about the Houston uh, client landing in LaGuardia, if he didn't have his affiliate, uh, what you see here, available fleet, if he didn't have anything in his affiliate network in LaGuardia or on this map around Los Angeles, then the owner of that client, the company in Houston, would have to make the decision if he wants to use somebody outside of his network that has current availability. So that is 100% controlled by you, the operator, on who you're going to select to use in that market, whether it's a pre-existing reservation or whether it's going to be for on-demand. Is that correct, Amir? Right. It's, it's really, we, we, if we don't get involved. It really has to do between your relationships and you directing exactly business to who you want to, right? Um, I hope I answered that. There was another question. I think there was an Uber question, Bill? Well, it was kind of, he was worried about Uber drivers getting onto the platform and having access to their data. 
Well, that's not going to happen because the drivers, or the, not the drivers, the operator is the one that is selecting who they're going to use. First and foremost, what I don't think really changes here for most of you that have bona fide networks that are built, you know, you're vetting, you, you have your additional insured, you know the owners, you know their duty of care practices, that's why you're using them as your affiliate in that town, right? You may want more affiliates for more inventory and go through that process, but grid does not control anything in regards to who you select. The operator has 100% control of how you set up the access to your dots, which are your vehicles, as Amir calls them, and to the parameters and how you're going to utilize grid. Yeah, it's, it's a very customizable, and, and we specifically built this to allow the industry to control exactly the fate of how they want to do business. Um, and and it, 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 as you can see, it goes with it. We, if we even create an automation that says, let us automate the five cars you have and auto-dispatch the five cars for you, if you like. Even right. if we get into that, where we're going to cause trouble because two of them are going to sit next to each other and they say, hey, you got three trips in a row, I didn't get one. What if that happens? And then you're going to have a whole bunch of political issues, right? So we, we don't want to control anything. We think there are so many great technologies out there. The existing reservation systems have good technology in them, and they can repurpose certain areas to make it into auto-dispatch very easily. I think they would be the best bet to do it rather than grid. Um, right. and grid will give you the, the facilitation to deliver that reservation to the dot, or expose the dots that want to be seen so, so partners can see each other. This is all about partners seeing each other. Right. It has awesome. nothing to do with That's great stuff, Amir. So I want to, I want to move on for real quick because we're at an hour and 12 minutes already, um, and we have a ton of questions to be able to get to when we're done. Amir, talk a little bit about the, the payment possibilities for the operators in regards to sending, receiving payments. Okay, so you know the the background we come from, which is really you know the e-commerce and all. Uh, with every order comes payment, right? I mean, it's just you know makes sense. And uh, we feel that on GNS, since we are streamlining the orders, which are the trips and reservations, we can also streamline invoicing and payment to make it a lot easier for everyone to be able to keep track of what are they receiving, what are they sending, and, and the activity of send and receive of money. Um, there is, we are talking small margins of, 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 of numbers that cause big dollars. If you, if you really consider 3% of the money you're spending or you're making, you're spending it on a credit card to pay your affiliate for the right they did, you just lost 3% off the top, right off the top. Um, just because of your payment mechanism, right? And if we're talking, you know, uh, low profit margins on some certain trips, that could cause a negative margin. So, you know, we want to help the industry kind of streamline payments to each other and really reduce the overhead um, of, of, of payments. Right. So here is a really good question. Um, could an Uber driver become a driver on the grid network? And I'm going to answer that for you and correct me if I'm wrong. Um, Amir, the answer is no, because of the fact that they don't have the ability to send or receive reservations because this is not integrated uh, with Uber's technology. The yeah. only way that this works is with Fast Track, with Livery Coach, um, almost done with Limo Anywhere and soon to be Hudson Group, right? So the only way that you would potentially see an Uber driver is if one of your affiliates is using Uber. So the answer is no, correct? Correct, Amir? correct. I mean, you need to become a limousine, licensed company, TCP number, get yourself, you know, and, and then now that you're a limousine transportation company, now you can sign up with one of these. But as Uber, no. No way. Cool. So, yes, you may have an Uber driver that resigns being with Uber and, and leaves and says, you know what, I make more money now. I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to make a lot more money now because I can actually work within the industry and be visible and I get paid better than Uber does. And you may have some Uber drivers come back, right? But again, it, what does it matter? There are dots on the map that nobody wants to do business with until they create a relationship, right? So it, does, it shouldn't bother you. If the guy is there, he's not Uber, he is like Amir, 
um, started his own little company and I've got a little car now. I used to carry an Uber app, but I found out about GNet and everything else and I've been doing business with limo companies all the time and, and they always paid me well. I would much rather go back to the limo industry and dump Uber because right. they pay me half. <laughs> <laughs> so, I've got the million dollar question for you that everybody's been asking. Does this cost $10,000 up front and $5 a trip? What's the cost for GNET? Oh, wow. Uh, there's no cost to sign up. We believe that, that you know, th this is very, very easy, simple forward. There's no cost to sign up. Um, what are the transactions cost? The transactions will depend on what system you're using. We're working with every software company right now because they are spending some money and, and uh, you know, resources on building this piece and connectivity. So we want to make sure that they're, 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 you know, they, we, we have a business model to go by that everybody's comfortable with. Um, we are targeting lower than what the competition is in the market, whatever the competition is, I cannot name, but we are going to be less than what the competition charges. Um, and we were going to keep that pricing for the industry this way. So I think that's a, a very politically correct way to answer that, Amir, for the operators who know I'm not politically correct and I speak my mind. <laughs> uh, and, and I'm very honest and blunt and straightforward. Look, the operators are going to determine what the cost is. There will be a minimal cost from, from GNET, from GRID to the software. And the software is going to determine uh, what that cost is going to be to you guys. Look, there is an expense uh, for your software company. There is an expense uh, for GNet. And when Grid set, or when Amir says that it's going to be less than the competition, I think you all know what the competition is. So I would say that it's going to be extremely affordable compared to what some of you have been paying on another platform that promised to implement this you know, a couple of years ago that never came to fruition on what they were going to charge uh, per trip. Hopefully that clarifies uh, that question as well as it can be um, today. Well said. I think I'm done. I mean, I'm, this, is, this is basically what we wanted to show up to this point. Uh, is Wes, I mean, I, I, I'm not sure, did you guys get a text or anything from Wes on if he's on or he can send anything? Because we could be also send another one from Livery Coach, but I think the demo kind of proves that all systems are working. Livery Coach, Lemo Anywhere, Fast Track, Lemo Anywhere, we're making it a little bit more easier to set up. So they're going to go through one more version of update, and we should be up and running within the next two weeks. So, Amir, there is a gentleman uh, named Demetrios Demerzidis. I, I can't enunciate his last name, but he posted a comment that said, Amir for president. Oh, lovely. <laughs> we love you. Just, just get GNET. Let's get this thing up and running. Your industry really needs this. Yeah. All right. So Randy says, I'm looking for livery coach test partner. Uh, if anyone on the call is interested, contact Randy Allen. Uh, if, you, if you're on Fast Track or one of the other platforms. Uh, Peak is in. Uh, Brian, how do you sign up for this? Hold on for one second, Brian, and I'm going to switch over to... Uh, the last screen once Amir is done and we'll give you Pat's contact information for questions. We're going to give you Amir's contact information and I'm going to give everybody the link that you can go to uh, to be able to sign up and the website that Pat Charla just, um, you know, delivered and launched this morning uh, prior to uh, the webinar. Let's see here. Regarding to his answer, the cost, let's see. I am also in. Goldie, that's awesome. So he's got a team, won't say that. Uh, John, sign me up. How will Grid make money? I think we've answered that. Cost to use the plumbing, Clayton, we answered that. Uh, can this work if my software does not integrate and we can do everything manually on our end? Um, Goldie, I'm not 100% certain uh, what that means, but um, I, Amir, if, they, if they're on a software platform that does not integrate, um, they're, they're, they really they can't use the grid technology, correct? Uh, for real time, it's going to be it's going to be probably no. Um, but we are thinking of of there is going to be companies that have no system. So we are we have our team already on that. So how they, how can they help companies that don't have a system integrated, and how can we create a real time communication between them? 
Okay, good answer. Uh, another question from Demetrius, who wanted to vote for you for president. So he's obviously not with Hillary, and he doesn't like Donald. You've impressed him today. Um, he asks, is this system compatible for the German European market? Yes. We are working with one of our um, technology uh, companies that we have integrated to is 2S Limo ERP. Um, they are based in Germany. As a matter of fact, if I pan over to Germany, um, you will see that quite a few of their customers are in there already. Um, it really depends on the um, the mapping that the, on their side they do. Most softwares on U.S. side carry currency, you know, units, dollars, this and that. So it's just a matter of mapping it to the other side. Yes, we have been doing that with Lemo ERP. So it. if if you have um, European or Asian or South American affiliates that you would like to be part of this system. Um, Amir and his team will be happy to work with anybody um, and see if there's a solution that we can give them so that they can get on the network. We don't know who they are, so if you want to send um, your um, international affiliates that you would like to have on board, uh, so that you can electronically transmit reservations to and from them. Just drop me or Amir um, an email, and we will um, we will reach out to them um, and see if they're interested and in what we need to do to get them on board. Yes. Great points. Um, we've got a lot of other questions coming in. One says, so we need another software program like Livery Coach or Limo Anywhere uh, to use Grid or you know, can we integrate this into our proprietary software? Um, if you're using your own software, absolutely you can. Um, as I stated earlier, uh, Amir's going to actually do about 90% of the API integration for you, and you just have to write, get a developer, or use your developer that built your software to write the last 10% um, of the software. But Amir, what if I'm a one or two car operator? Um, that has no software? I'm using a cell phone and a day runner, but I'm legit, you know, I mean, I've got my... TLC permits or my PUC permits in California, and I've got my insurance. I'm a real bona fide operator, you know, working out of Cerritos, California, right? Okay. So what I would tell you is if you don't have the software to integrate with Grid, this is set up for the affiliates, right? So the yes. first thing I would do would be to go to one of your local affiliate partners that's integrated with Grid that would be sending, the, sending you these trips, and all they have to do is put you on their driver app. Is that accurate? That's right. Cool. So Correct. that answers that question. Um, is Grid going to block TNC users and only work with real livery from Clayton? Yeah, so it's got to integrate with the software, Clayton. Uh, so this Grid is not going to be integrated with Uber and Lyft and Sidecar and the TNC's uh, software. So just like the uh, independent operator or the two-car guy with no software in Los Angeles, he's got to go to a Music Express or an Empire or Diva or, you know, exclusive and become their affiliate and get access to their driver app, which means they're hopefully going to vet, I know they're going to vet him uh, to use them in his affiliate network. He will not be able to directly come into uh, the grid network. So the Uber drivers are out. Is that correct? Yeah. Correct. Awesome. Uh, Amir for president again uh, from someone else. Um, Point out this is not a proprietary system. It is based on standards already adopted uh, in use by corporate travel market for air, hotel, and rental. Open Travel Alliance. I don't, I'm not overly familiar with that. that. Randy. I know you are. Can you comment to that? You know, um, um, thank you, Amir Randy. Can, Amir can address it. Um, Open Travel Alliance is an alliance of the travel companies, actually. Um, um, American Airlines, Saber, uh, there, is, there is quite a few actually hotels. Um, they're all involved in creating a standard for uh, communicating messages between different industry technologies. And one of the things they developed uh, five, six years ago was the standard for ground reservations and ground transportation. S and that's what we used OTA model 
to start the grid platform because it's a standard that's already accepted or it's, it's from a company and a group that are well established and well respected. Um, and nobody would come around and say, hey, why is grid setting a standard and who are they, <laughs> right? So we used really the, tech, the, the standard from the industry. And this is coming from your own industry for tra from travel, OTA. Great question, Randy. Great answer, Amir. For everybody that's uh, you know still here that's been asking for Amir and Pat's information, you can see it here. He's Amir at grdd.net, pat at driveprofit.com gridtechnologies.com for the new website that Pat just built. And then you have the registration link down below. Uh, Pat, can you pop that into the questions, uh, that reservation link, and give them an answer so they can click straight out of the, uh, the question pane and just send to all? Sure. So Pat's going to update that link for you guys so you don't even have to try to copy and paste. It'll be in the right-hand side under the questions. Um, let's see. Is there a plan for GNET to create a customer app, or is this only going to work through limo companies to aid in affiliate work. I understand the great help that is for with us with Farm Outs, Farm Ins. Just wondering if it will eventually get to customers through a GNET app for on demand. Hmm. Um, no, uh, we would be stepping on toes if we do that because we have uh, companies, partner companies, software companies, even providers like yourselves who have initiatives to create these things. And if we do that, we would be uh, kind of competing in, in that area. Uh, I think really what he's asking about is there going to be a universal app, right? And you don't need it anymore, right? You don't need it. universal app. That's really not in the best interest. This is just my opinion. Not in the best inter interest for the industry as a whole. So this is going to allow you to continue to operate in your operating system for you to own your brand, which would be very important for me. Um, I don't want to be on a universal brand that by anybody, whether it's Grid or the NLA or an operator, what have you, because then you're losing your brand allegiance to the company. So this allows you to protect that, protect your customer base, and not have to switch uh, softwares while maintaining that relationship with your customers. Grid does not get in between you and your customers. If your customers never see Grid, you really will never see Grid. It's just going to be like you're operating your software today. It's just going to create a tremendous amount of efficiency, not only for you, but also for your customer. Right. So your passenger app, the one that you're using already, should, should work afterwards and will do what we just showed you from the other apps. Your driver app should be able to broadcast itself within the next couple of months to your partners across the world. And you don't have to buy another software, unless if you just want to change brands. But you don't have to buy a new software to enable these features. Um, here, here's a question. Is the software currently fully operational? Uh, and is it fully operational today? You're asking from the engineering team or you're asking from the sales team? From the, from the, <laughs> opera, from the operator standpoint, okay. is it fully operational today? Yeah, yeah. It, you know, it does what it needs to do, pre-reserved, uh, tracking the cars, getting it there, update statuses, both sides. It, it does all that. Um, from an engineering perspective, we're never done. If we ever say we're done, you should be worried. Okay, You're, the answer you want to hear is we're never done <laughs> because we're always developing something new on top of it, right? right. So I've got what, a, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, but what we have today is, 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 is complete that initial uh, pain point for the industry, which is I can't see my partner, partner's car when they're using my, you know, when they have my passenger, right? I right. This, is a, this is a good question for multiple for, uh, operators. Uh, Mayor and Pat that have multiple locations. This comes from Andy in Texas, and I think Jason would probably be interested in this as well. Um, and I have multiple locations. So Andy has already signed up on Grid, and his, he's plotted into San Antonio. But he actually has operations in Corpus Christi and Dallas and Austin and other cities. So how is that going to affect how he shows up on the map when it shows him currently in San Antonio when you have multiple locations? 
Okay, if you are controlling dispatch centrally, uh, you will get one grid ID for all your locations, obviously, uh, because it's being controlled centrally anyways. You're controlling it from one of them, and all the other cities are just executing, okay? If you are, each city has its own operational dispatch and controls its own fleet, then each city ends up with a different grid ID. It's its, its own little business, right? It's its own little entity. Um, so that's what separates them from each other. We, we either give one grid ID to all your locations because your main location is the one that decides who gets the trips and how it gets executed, or you get multiple locations, multiple grid IDs if you are running them separately. Great answer. Um, Jordan asks, how about payment processing when the trip is complete? We're not doing payment processing yet at the moment. But what's going to happen is, yes, uh, payment processing, once it comes out, it's going to follow right after completion and closing of your accounting. I think there's an accounting close step which each one of these reservation systems. And after that step is when it gets synchronized to the other side. So we are working on that. Awesome. So. Just for everybody that's uh, still here, we've got, uh, we are way over our time. You guys have had some amazing questions. We are literally 31 minutes uh, past our allotted time. So if you have any last minute questions, we're going to hang out for about another 30 to 45 seconds. So type really, really quickly. Um, and then we're going to adjourn. I, I want to take this just a minute to see if we have any last minute questions coming into Amir. Okay. Thank you so much. Not only for today but for your vision and you know the the millions of dollars that you invested into this for the industry um, I, I wish I was still an operator when I was that this technology would have been around if it was I probably would still be operating <laughs> um, Pat thank you for your you know uncompensated commitment to believe in the industry and believe in Amir and believe in grid over the last four years um, I commend both of you uh, tremendously thank you so much thank you all um, let's see, why wouldn't we just process them once the ride is pushed into our operating system? Um, I think he, Ken means in regards to processing payments. I, I think, Ken, because you're going to end up having some better options than just doing a manual payment process, uh, which is what Amir is leading to, but I don't think that's 100% ready to go today. Is that a fair statement? Correct. And what Correct. we're talking about really is kind of automated payments. Is that accurate? That's right. Correct. That's right. Okay, cool. Um, so that kind of wraps it up with all of our questions. Once again, everybody, thank you for jumping on today's webinar. If you have questions, reach out to Amir at, Amir at grdd.net. You can see it here on the screen, Pat at Drive Profit. Um, I'll even give you my email address, bill at limogrowth.com, uh, and check out their new website that Pat just built, gridtechnologies.com, uh, and don't forget about that registration link. Um, as well. Thank you, Sally, very much. We appreciate it. Thank you, Wade, uh, and for Wade getting behind grid. I know you've been on it for quite some time. That's a wrap for us. Thank you once again, Pat, Amir, and everybody that was on uh, today's webinar. We'll see you.